In today's video, I'm going to go over my favorite gear that I use on the Appalachian Trail and why it's my favorite gear. I've already put out a few other videos in this series, including my favorite hostels, my favorite views, and my favorite food. I decided to come outside on my porch today to do this video. It is pretty cold, but I've got coffee, so it's all good. <laughs> my first favorite piece of gear is my Patagonia R1 hoodie. I started in the winter and finished in the winter, and this kept me warm. It helped keep me dry even when it would rain. It, it helped as a protection against getting wet to some degree. It's not waterproof or anything, but it, but it did help. And in addition to that, it did a really good job of wicking the sweat away from my body. Because it's a jacket, it fully unzips. I just thought it was a lot more convenient to wear on the trail because I could take it on and off as I needed while I was hiking. Another favorite piece of gear was my mini Nalgene bottle. This is 16 ounces. I picked this up when I flip-flopped up to Maine, which was about midway through my hike. I just really love this. Every morning, I always had a carnation instant slash protein powder drink for breakfast. And I did that almost every single day of my hike. And this just worked really great to be able to put that in there, shake it up really good and drink it on the trail. You could certainly use just a regular water bottle or smart water bottle, but because I wanted to have that designated for my waters and things like that, it has like a little hook on it. And so you can attach it on your pack easily. I could put all the little stickers that I got along the trail and it really doesn't weigh very much at all. And it doesn't take that much space. And I just loved having it. It also can work as if you wanted to put boiling water in it and then put it in your sleeping bag to help warm you up. I never personally did that but that's definitely an option. So I just loved that I had this. Another favorite piece of gear was this straw that a hiker friend gave to me on the trail. I did end up replacing it one time while I was on the trail just because I do put flavored powders in my water. And so it was just getting kind of clogged with the residue from the powders and it kind of got really discolored. So I ended up changing it out, but it's a super easy to make. I have a video on how to make this. It's you're not even hardly making it, you're basically buying it. But it was just so awesome because I put it into my life water bottles that I used on the trail. You can use smart water bottles, but if you get the flip top cap, you put the straw in there. Of course, you wanna have a water bottle holder that you put on your shoulder, pout, um, shoulder strap, but it just made it easy to quickly get water along the trail. I was bad about doing that sometimes, and this just made it so much more convenient and so much easier to do. My collapsible Nalgene bottle, I loved. This was specifically used for bathroom breaks in my tent. I have here the 32 ounce bag. I got this on Amazon, but I just loved having it. Like I said, it has a screw top lid and it packs down really small. This is super lightweight, but I just used it when I had to do my number one at night. I would use this in my tent. It just made it easier. I didn't have to get out in the middle of the night. It's particularly when it was really cold and it just made it to me a lot more convenient and it was worth just that few extra ounces to make my sleeping experience better. <laughs> this piece of gear is crucial to a through hike, a buff. This piece of gear got used for a multitude of different things. I used it not only as a headpiece to help keep my head warm and my ears covered when it was cold. I also used it as a neck warmer at times when it was in the summer and my, I was wearing shorts and my, you know, the sweat and all that kind of made friction on your legs. I would use this to kind of help keep the friction between my legs and that worked great for that. I actually used it as a sports bra for a short time on the trail because crazy enough, I lost my sports bra <laughs> while I was on the trail. And this worked great for that. Mm -hmm. And it can work as a rag. It can work. I mean, there's just a multitude of uses. If you're going to be on the trail, I just highly recommend one of these. They're awesome. I picked up this Patagonia fanny pack when I was in New Hampshire. And this was later on in my hike, like halfway through, but I liked having it, even though I had side pockets, I like to always have all of the things I needed for my hike at the ready. I didn't want to have to take my pack off and, and, and rummage through my pack. So one of the things I really liked about this was it has two pockets. I would put my wallet in here and then here in little baby Yoda. If you've watched my AT videos, you know I carried a little tiny baby Yoda and my phone. So I use my phone constantly through my hike. This was just quick, easy to quickly grab my phone and video or take pictures. But what the, one of the reasons that it's my favorite pieces of gear and why I like it so much is because I kept it all on my person. 
which meant if I had to take my pack off for any reason, I still had my wallet, I still had my phone, I sort of had basically the essentials that I absolutely did, want, did not want to lose inside of this and so i just thought that was very convenient another very favorite piece of gear was my black diamond alpine carbon cork trekking poles i love these trekking poles not only did i use these poles every day for 189 days of hiking but i also used them to hold up my tent and they just worked so great these are the one pair that i used for 2200 miles i actually even used them for a little bit of miles before i ever went on my through bike and they're still holding up. I had no issues with them whatsoever. They're not necessarily the lightest trekking poles that you can purchase, but I did not really want super light, like super, super light, because I thought they would be more likely to break. So these held up really well. They were super sturdy. They're not crazy heavy. I think it's about 17 ounces for the pair. But, and of course I used them the entire time on the trail, but I just love these. Like I said, they're still going strong and that's pretty impressive because I saw a lot of other hikers who had to replace their trekking poles once or twice on the trail. Another favorite piece of gear was my Z-Pax duplex tent. This is the camouflage version. It is super lightweight. It weighs in at 20 ounces for this particular mod, uh, version. It is made from Dyneema fabric and some of the awesome things about it besides it being super lightweight is that when you're taking your tent down you can stuff it in your pack you don't have to roll it up or anything so it makes it super easy and super quick to take down your tent and stuff it into a sack and hit the trail you use your trekking poles to set it up and the setup is actually pretty simple once you get kind of the hang of it it's pretty quick to get your tent set up i love that even when it would pour down rain and i would take my tent down and pack it away and never added any additional weight to my pack it doesn't absorb water it also is super quick drying. So anytime my tent was wet and I would set it up, it would dry super fast. It was super roomy. I would put my pack inside of my tent. I had plenty of space. I had it up in high winds. And even though it did collapse on me in some high winds, I realized it was because I hadn't staked it quite well. Once I staked it well, it worked great. And I love it. The biggest downside for me is the fact that it's not a freestanding tent and there was a couple of times on the trail that i wish i had a freestanding tent but you can have these particular ones turned into a freestanding tent something i wish i had done before i hit the trail and something i may consider doing for future use my enlightened equipment enigma quilt was also another very favorite piece of gear main reason being is that i started in the winter i had finished in the winter and so I was in the cold quite a bit. And this thing always kept me warm, always. And this is a 10 degree version that I have here. And I, like I said, it's the Enigma. So it has the closed toe box, which I prefer, but it's pretty lightweight. I wanna say this weighs about 24 ounces. It packs down super small, it is a down quilt, but this kept me warm, like the entire hike. And I got down to some pretty low temperatures. And so to me, it was vital. I mean, you, it's important that you have a I have a good sleeping bag or quilt that is going to keep you warm and you're not gonna get hypothermia from, and this did it. It's also super comfortable. I never actually used a sleeping liner, didn't need it. And when I got home, it was very smelly, but I used the down cleaner, did the cleaning and it smells great. And it just still holds up so well. It's just still in such perfect condition. There's no tears, no, there's just nothing wrong with it. And I don't know if it's just the quality of the quilt or what, but. I love it. And I'm really glad I had this particular item when I was on the trail in the summer months. Man, the bugs are relentless. It's so bad. In fact, I would say it's one of the worst things about hiking, um, about doing a through hike is the bugs. And I'm so glad I had this bug net. <laughs> it helps to have a baseball cap with a brim when you're wearing it, but man, it helped so much with the bugs and keep them out of my face. It was a lifesaver and I'm so glad I had it. This particular one I had on the trail was the Sea to Summit head net and it has the insect shield repellent version. And I'm so glad I had it. I also really loved my Z-Pax rain cover. This is also made from Dyneema fabric. One of the reasons why I consider it a favorite piece of gear is when there was a lot of rain, it was nice to have something like this to put over my pack. If you have a Dyneema fabric backpack, you, this might be overkill, but I did not. And so this was just really nice to have for the simple fact that it didn't necessarily keep my pack completely dry. I mean, it's almost impossible when it rains and you're out hiking every day to not get wet. 
but it made a huge difference. It did help keep my pack from just becoming completely drenched. And because it's Dyneema fabric, I could take it off of the pack, you know, when I was done with it and shake out the water and it didn't add any extra weight into my pack. And this particular item only weighs one ounce. And as you can see, it's pretty small. So it doesn't take up much space in your pack. The Garmin Enreach Mini was another favorite piece of gear. I did start out with the Garmin Explorer when I first started the trail, but realized that it was a little bit larger and heavier than what I needed for what I was going to use it for on the trail. And so I switched it to the mini version. It comes in so handy for being able to communicate with friends or family while you're on the trail. It, it's great to have because if you don't have signal and there are going to be times on a through hike, particularly on the Appalachian Trail, where there is not signal. And this just comes in so handy. You can send preset messages that don't cost any extra or you can send personalized messages. This came in very handy for me when I had to reach out to my husband because I did not have signal on the trail and I needed a ride into town. I was able to send him a message and then he was able to contact that person for me to give me a ride. You can also do tracking on these devices, although I did not use it for that purpose. And it has an SOS button that you can use in case of a, an emergency and you needed to get help on the trail because of injury or something like that. These things are not necessarily that cheap. They retail for about $350. You can get them cheaper sometimes. And then you have to purchase a monthly plan, which ranges from $12 up to $50 a month. I had the $12 plan. It worked fine for me. I was able to send as many message, preset messages as I wanted through the day. So when I would send a message to my mom or my husband, it would send my location. So they could kind of see where I was out on the trail. It's worth it for the peace of mind to know that if a bad situation arised, you have a way out. If you don't have signal, you have a way to communicate and it's worth it to me. And I'm so glad I had this piece of gear on the trail. My last favorite piece of gear I can't actually show you because I'm using it right now to film this video, but that is my phone. And I have an iPhone 11 Pro. I don't know if it really actually matters what brand of phone that you have or anything like that, but I did actually really like the one I have that I used on the trail. One of the reasons I wanted to include it as one of my favorite pieces of gear on my Appalachian Trail through hike is because it was so versatile. I used it for so many things. Not only did I use it to record all of my videos, not only did I use it to edit all of my videos, but it was also my communication tool to contact my husband, my kids, my mom. It, I also used it as my camera to take photos along the trail. I used the gut hook app, which I highly recommend if you're a through hiker or a long section hiker to use it on the trail. So I used my phone to use that app to figure out where I was at on the trail, you know, to find out water sources, campsites, things like that. And I cannot imagine honestly having done this hike without the phone. I know that people have done through hikes over the years without a phone device, but I actually think it's pretty handy and it's such a small lightweight option to carry. Why wouldn't you do it? We live in the 21st century and there's nothing wrong with having a phone on your hike. I think it's a great tool to have and I'm glad I had that item on my hike. All right, well, that's it for this video today. Let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite pieces of gear that you carry when you go hiking or backpacking. I'd love to know. If you're like me, I'm not necessarily what I would call a gearhead because I don't know everything there is to know about gear, but I do really enjoy gear and I enjoy finding new pieces of gear and I enjoy learning why some people like certain pieces of gear more than others. So hopefully this video is, if nothing else, entertaining, if not informative. So until the next video, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.